Richard, in, in the video lesson, you said that your tradition emphasizes the transcendence of God. Yeah. Well, doesn't it do that because the Bible does it? I don't know historically exactly why. I, th I have some ideas why my branch of the church emphasizes the transcendence of God over his eminence, his nearness, but I don't think it's because the Bible does. Mm -hmm. Now, people get the impression that it does, but I think a lot of the reason why we think the Bible emphasizes the transcendence or the bigness of God, his distance more than his eminence, is because of the influence of Neoplatonism early in the church and Aristotelianism later on in the medieval church. And in fact, the Reformation was still a part of that emphasis or stress on Aristotle's philosophy as a way of thinking about God and about life. And in Aristotle's philosophy, just like in Plato's philosophy, the emphasis was that God is above everything and not connected to what's down here, not imminently involved in things down here. But in the Bible itself, if you think about it, if you can, if you can sort of take those glasses off for a moment, those Aristotelian glasses off for just a moment, you can realize that the Bible really doesn't talk that much about God being far away. No, it does, or him being distant or super above everything. It does do that, but by and large, the Bible emphasizes and talks a lot about God's involvement in the world. It doesn't say at Genesis 1-1, in the beginning was God. That's not what it says. If, if Aristotle had written the Bible, that's what he would say. But it says, in the beginning, God created, there's eminence, you see, created the heavens and the earth. And so from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the end, this, it's a story of God's involvement in history. And I, know, I understand that people tend to feel as if they have to choose between these two, that you have to somehow choose between God being absolutely transcendent above everything, or they choose that he is imminent, close, near, involved. And the wonderful thing about the Bible is, is that it doesn't make that choice. It says both are true. God is transcendent, which means he's above time, he's above space, he's above all limitations, except his own character. And at the same time, the Bible says that he is imminently involved, right here in the creation, constantly. Um, you know, other religions have God very high and lifted up, like Islam does. Other philosophies like deism and those sorts of things, perversions of Christianity, have God way up, up there in the heavens and not really involved down here. Um, other religions have God, um, like pantheism and panentheism, that God is so eminent that he's, he can't be distinguished from the creation. He is the creation. You know, there's a lot of uh, new age movements and things like that in my own country where that's the vision that God is nature and nature is God. The universe is God. Well, the Bible doesn't go to either of those extremes. The Bible goes to the extreme of saying God is above everything, but it also goes down to this extreme of saying he's also eminently involved. So which is more important to you in your personal life, that God had transcended or that he's imminent? I think that God is imminent. Really? Well, that's good because I think that's where most of us are usually. You know, we don't want a distant God who can't hear our prayers and who can't respond and who can't be involved. We want him to be very involved. But I would venture to say there are times when you're grateful that he's not so involved that he doesn't, that he's not out of the picture too. Yeah. 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 Because um, we're, we're obviously involved and our problem is uh, we're involved down here so much we can't get any perspective and we don't have control over everything and we don't have um, an angle for looking at things in the larger picture. Well, God does, which is what makes him so trustworthy is that he's not just down here with us, but he's up there in control of everything from a distant realm too. But I have to say that the opposite is bad. If you think that what you really get from God is transcendence, then you get no answers to prayer. You get no personal involvement of Jesus. And so, you know, my, you know my basic philosophy on these kinds of things, and it is that you tend to emphasize what's needed. And I think that's what the Bible does. At any particular moment or any particular verse or passage in the Bible, they're emphasizing either the transcendence of God or his eminence based upon what the people hearing it, hearing that part of the Bible or writing that part of the Bible need to hear, need to see, need to understand. And sometimes in our lives we need to stress that God is transcendent. Other times we need to stress that he's very eminent. And that balance point is a matter of, remember, of momentary synchronicity. Because that deck of life is always shifting, balance can be nothing more than momentary synchronicity.